The chapter in my book on ETFs is called A Traitor to the Cause. Traitor, not traitor. Wouldn't dare say that, but it is that too. Uh, and uh, I'm bothered about ETFs. Uh, they are, think about it this way, uh, <coughs> that we have passive, invest, in, passive investment strategies called indexing. And there are two groups that own them, passive investors and active investors. And the traditional index funds, TIFs I call them, an acronym which has never been picked up by anybody but me in four years or six years, and ETFs to give you the, that's, and ETFs are clearly passive funds owned by active investors. Active investing is trading, active investing is speculation, active investing is losing. And TI, ETFs are a loser's game. Let me be very clear about that. Uh, we were doing some mathematics. Uh, Mike Nolan, my, do you want to wave your hand? Mike, my good assistant who's here with me. And I should introduce my son Andrew, who's here in the first row, of course. Um, and uh, so we did, I was just playing some numbers games. And I looked at the growth of exchange-traded funds and traditional index funds in the last decade, roughly. And they were virtually identical. Uh, they'd both grown at about 18% a year. And then I looked at the sources of that growth. And the sources of that growth for the traditional index funds, it was 65% appreciation and 35% new capital coming in. <coughs> and for ETFs, it was exactly the opposite. 35% appreciation and 65% for capital coming in. You kind of know that from the press. They're very popular. Uh, they, they do all kinds of wild things, which I could talk about for a minute later on. Uh, but in any event, I thought, well, wait a minute, there's a message here. If all the, if all the appreciation, if, if the appreciation is heavily concentrated with traditional index funds, what does that mean about the returns of the two? That the returns of ETFs are considerably lower than the returns from traditional index funds. And you can measure this pretty easily. Mike does it for me. I can't tell you it's easily, easy firsthand, but, you know, we go over the data. And it turns out that the traditional index funds have had a return during that in in that period of 7%, 7.1%, and the ETFs have had a return, the average ETF, of 4.7%. That means you had your choice between a 10-year return of roughly 120%, I'm doing a little bit of this off the top of my head, or, or about 70, 110%, 120% from the traditional index funds, and a return of about half that, 65%, from exchange-traded funds. Why doesn't anybody know that? Why is that news? And does nobody care? And the reality is that ETFs are, one of the, are probably the greatest financial innovation of the 21st century. They are probably also the worst investment innovation of the 20th century because people use ETFs badly. And the sponsorship is wild. Henry Kaufman would call them, if he were around at this meeting today, he would call them financial buccaneers. Mm -hmm. And what's the response? Ron, what they do, open up a paper two or three days ago, we have two new ETFs. Mm -hmm. One is ETFs that are long electronic marketing firms and short retail marketing firms. That's an ETF. They brought it out just to capitalize on this momentary uh, trend that's going on there. Uh, then we have one just brought out for distillers, people that like to drink or whatever. Uh, and then we have another brought out for people that believe GOP policies will win. And of course, another <laughs> one that, that people believe wow. that democratic Sounds policies, like risky, you have your yeah, choice. Risky bet. Uh, it's an insane marketing game in which, do I make myself clear? Yeah, I think you do, <laughs> I think you do. Um. <laughs> in which, Salesmen need something to sell. So we throw out more new red meat yeah. to be sold. It's a marketing business still, the investment business. It should be much less of a marketing business and much more of a fiduciary business, I think. Mm. I know. And, uh, and it's obvious that trading is your enemy and uh, is the investor's enemy and, and the broker's friend. I mean, this is not complicated. So um, 
I, I'm really troubled. And you see this in ETS. The capital flows are wild up and down month after month. And sometimes those capital change in capital flows is, or the capital flows themselves, maybe 80 or 90 percent the spider, the standard and poor's. They have their phases where everybody likes them or nobody likes them. So you take look at a given month and you see a let's say a $10 million inflow into, into ETFs, and it's $9 million in the spider. Uh, it's a very market-moving thing that, um, that they're very proud of uh, at State Street, and they brag in the paper every day. It's the first time in history that, that, that any stock has turned over at 15 million shares an hour. They're proud of that. Mm. They're proud of that. Think of that. What is that to be proud of? 